We did a lot of work in the previous video, so adding validation as well as the ability to update our profile is going to be pretty straightforward in this one. So first of all, we need to add validation to make sure that we can't update our profile, we can't update a user's document until our display name has a value of at least three characters. The display name's not empty or has a value that's not long enough. And also, we need to make sure our bio isn't too long. So, the way that we're going to keep track of whether our bio field as well as our display name field are valid with the help of two additional state values, underscore bio valid, that'll initially be set to true. We'll assume, of course, that when we go to edit profile for the first time, that bio is valid as well as display name valid. That's what we're going to name the other state variable, and both of these are going to be Booleans. So how are we going to prevent our profile from being updated whenever we tap on the update profile button if our fields aren't valid? Well, first of all, we're going to replace the function that we're associating with the on pressed of the update profile button. We're going to change that with a new function called update profile data. So for this function, which we'll make, we're going to conditionally set the two values that we just created, display name valid and bio valid, according to the conditions that we laid out at the beginning. If our display name is too short, then our display name is going to be invalid. If our bio text is too long, then the bio is going to be invalid. So here, at the beginning of update profile data, we'll execute set state. And for our first condition, if the display name controller's text has a length that's less than three, and we'll make sure to call dot trim on text to get rid of the white space. If it's less than three, or if display name controller dot text is empty, then we're going to set display name valid to false in state. Otherwise, so we'll use a ternary here, display name valid will be its original value of true. Then for our biocontroller, if biocontroller.text.trim, if its length is greater than, say, 100 characters, you can set the upper bound at whatever you'd like, then we're going to say that the bio valid piece of state will be false. Otherwise, bio valid will be true. So only if display name is valid and bio is valid are we going to update our user's document. And we'll do that with users ref dot document. And we'll pass in the current user's ID from widget dot current user ID dot update data. And we'll pass in the map where display name is set to display name controller dot text and bio is set to bio controller dot text. Now what about user feedback? When these inputs are invalid, how are we going to indicate to our users that they've provided an invalid value? Well, we're going to head back to each of the fields that's within our two functions, build display name field and build bio field. We'll head there and for each of the input decoration classes, we have a property called error text. And here we can add a ternary where for the build display name field, for the display name field, if display name is valid, 
to indicate that there's no error, we'll set it to null. Otherwise, we'll return the text display name to short, which will be the error for display name. And then for our bio field, we'll check based on the value of bio valid. And if there is a problem with it, we'll say the bio is too long. And finally, the last thing to take care of is our snack bar at the very bottom. So to show that within a scaffold, we know what to do. We need to create a global key, which will associate with the key on scaffold. So kind of working backwards, we'll create a variable called underscore scaffold key, which we'll create in state. We'll create a final scaffold key that's set to a global key. We'll create a global key of type scaffold state. And then within update profile data at the end, after we've updated the user's profile and our fields are valid, we'll first create a variable snack bar that's of type snack bar. And we'll make one where the content is set to a text widget that just says profile updated. And then to show it, we use scaffold key dot current state dot show snack bar and pass in our snack bar variable. So now we can save edit profile and we'll test this out. We'll put in an invalid display name. We'll hit update profile. You see display name too short, so that's good. And for our bio, if we provide something greater than 100 characters, we see bio too long. But if both are the correct length, we'll try updating profile. You see profile updated. That's good, and then we can go back if we just check the check mark, and we see those values were applied for the display name and bio. And finally, let's take care of logout. So to log out our user, we'll head down to the last button, and instead of printing logout, now let's reference a new function with the name logout. And if you'll recall from our home page, in order to make this work, we just have to use Google sign in. So we can import that from our home page. So we should be importing home.dart. We'll make this async. We'll await Google sign in dot sign out. And we want to move away from our edit profile page and push back to the home page. This is going to ensure that our logged out user can't edit any user information on this page anymore. So we'll say navigator.push, provide context, our material page route, and our builder. And at the end of this function, we'll return with our home page. So let's try that out. So we'll click on log out. And we're logged out and taken back to home. And we see our sign in with Google button. And with that, we now have our completed edit profile page.